as most of you guys know, when you start going faster, you start making more horsepower, you start modifying your Fox body, you gotta start feeding it. Give me fuel, it. give me fire, give me that old Chinese sign. I made a pretty long video on how you can actually apply more fuel to your stock bottom end and stock fuel rails and stock rails, whatever, in this video here. Spent a lot of time on Feed the Beast video showing you how you could modify the hanger, put a bigger pump in it, wire it so it's very efficient for your fuel system. If you're new to the channel here, this is my 1990 Fox Body 363 Stroker with a custom B&G turbo kit that fits under a stock hood. The one thing about this motor is it needs fuel. A lot of it. Now I know some of you stock bottom and stock block guys don't relate to some of this, uh, you know, high horsepower. It's all pretty much relatable, even in your stock bottom end car. I have a big boy fuel system for this car. Now it wasn't always like that. Uh, black car, back in the day, we was running mid tens, high tens. It was all stock bottom end GT40 junkyard stuff. We ran stock rails, stock regular, pretty much right up to almost 600 horsepower. Ran 10 teens with this car on that. So if you guys are out there doing that, this relates to you as well. If the fuel system is something that you're not ready for yet, there's nothing wrong with your stock rails. Put a regulator on it, wire your pump with that video I just showed you and send it. But those of you that like me had gotten to the point that got to feed it more fuel, on a big motor, big stroke motor, big cube motor, turbo, whatever, which usually what happens with turbo and superchargers cars is you gotta upgrade your fuel system. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this car up. I'm gonna show you what fuel system looks like. Don't beat me up guys, it's a do-it-yourself channel, it's a do-it-yourself shop. So, I mean, nothing's perfect, nothing's gonna be perfect, and I'm not looking for spick span clean car show stuff. Cause you guys know I send my shit down the track. Let me get this car up, let me show you this, how I ran my fuel system underneath, and then we'll go back to the front. I, I just figured it would be fitting to just go back here and start from back here. I just did the exhaust video. If you guys want to check out the exhaust video and how I made a dual exhaust out of a turbo exhaust on a single Y pipe, go check that out. Also check out that Feed the Beast one I'm telling you guys about. What I did here is I actually ended up taking my stock tank and making a sump. Now this is kind of important because the sump actually feeds the pump over here and my pump is actually below my sump level, which is kind of smart. I ended up putting the tank over here. I ended up putting the return because I didn't want to aerate my fuel over here on this sump. Now I didn't want to have to go to a sump, but when your car starts making power, you got to pretty much go to something like this or even a double or triple hat, like a Cobra tank or whatever. So that's always a good option. You know, again, guys running your stock bottom end stuff, you guys could take your drop your tank. You could modify your hanger in that video. I showed you how to modify your hanger and you could just put your own little twist on it. But one of the main things in that video that's very, very important is wiring the pump. I think we are pretty much ready for the tank. This is your modified and uh, you know, fuel pump. <laughs> now, basically what I mean by that, I actually just took my positive and negative wires that usually would have went into the stock hanger in my tank here. And these actually fed the pump directly in my stock hanger. I just felt I should talk about stock bottom and stuff and what you can do in, in, in just kind of like an application thing for what we're doing here. Cause we're kind of doing them both. You know what I mean? I don't want to just teach you how to do a, a, a big uh, fuel system, but I also want to kind of reiterate on those people that actually run that. So getting back into the actual fuel system of my black car, we ended up running a dash 10 dash eight return, which is plenty, plenty of fuel for 800, 900,000 wheel. And we ended up sending our 625 Magna fuel pump and had it rebuilt and sent back and upgraded to 750. And I've had no issues with this pump on the street. I've driven it a lot. I've driven it for a long periods of time, AKA 30, 45 minutes to an hour never got super hot on me you know i've always been checking it just to make sure they're all and the company's really good like magna fuel shout out to them because magna fuel every i mean they will take the pump back rebuild it for like 100 bucks 75 bucks they'll change the brushes in it check it out and then they'll send it back stamped you know ready to go 
All right, so I'm gonna show you how I routed my lines. It's not perfect, guys. I mean, I know that you guys, you know, some of you guys might run it a different way, and that's okay. I ran mine this way. I wanna actually move my fuel pressure regulator eventually. I mean, I'm not in any hurry, but it is kind of a pita to try to check my fuel pressure in the wrong spot. But anyways, getting into the feed, you got my dash 10 that comes out of the tank here and comes into the pump. And the pump's lower than the tank, so that's kind of nice because it keeps feeding it. Um, it comes out, I don't like this 45, but I had to get it away from the three inch tailpipe. Goes up over the anti-roll bar, comes down the driver's side, both the dryer, uh, the feed and the return. So the, the feed comes in from the back, goes up into a Y block, it goes up to the intake. The regulator is on the return side to regulate the fuel. And then it goes back with a dash eight all the way back here, where again, I dumped it at the corner of the tank to keep it away from aerating the pump. Now I understand that, that uh, that's not routed exactly the way, it's not pretty, it's not perfect, but again, you know, this is a do-it-yourself shop. I'm happy with the way it is. It doesn't really bother anything. What I really need to do is move that regulator up or with a braided line, go up there and put the gauge up there, which is probably what I'll do because this isn't really in the way of anything. Turbo exhaust is on this side, regulator's on this side. So let me bring the car back down and we will show, I will show you, we'll come back to the front and then we'll talk about it. All right, so let me show you what's up, up front here. So you see I ran my lines over here, and they both go to the front. Uh, one feeds one rail, but it feeds it in the middle of the rail because that's normal for this, this type of rail system. And the other one feeds the passenger from the front. Now each line has its own exit, which goes down to the regulator. Now these injectors just go in and, you know, in like their stock location, like you normally would have them. And they're 160 pound injectors. So, you know, your regulator, your, your dash 10, dash eight feed, your rails, your aftermarket fuel pump and your lines. That's pretty much it for a fuel system. But all that stuff is expensive because mine, I run E85. And in order to run E85, you have to run PTFE, which is a special coating. So the E85 doesn't eat up your lines. Now, am I saying that you should run out and buy MagnaFuel and PTFE, you know, Bosch 160 pound injectors or IDs or whatever? No, it's, you should not need to do, run what you got, run what you brung and hope you brung it up. Your car will tell you and so won't the tuner when you're out of fuel. And when that happens, you either got to go to a bigger injector, a bigger pump or bigger lines or all of the above. So and real quick, I want to actually hit you up on, well, what's some examples of that? Very simple. If you're running a stock block, stock bottom end, on three, light aluminum heads, entry level aluminum heads, entry level intake, you know, you don't need to run more than 42s, but I would run 60 pound injectors, a regulator, a wired 340 pump, and send that to the moon. You know, you could make enough block splitting power to split the block without changing the fuel system on a stock block bottom end. You know, if you're running NA, and you got light, you know, you got entry level aluminum heads, entry level intake, just run your 19s. Run your 19s until your car starts breaking up at 6,000 RPM. Wire your pump, put an aftermarket regulator on. I'm telling you guys, the, 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 we've been doing this for years. There's a lot of people can chime in. So make sure you guys chime in in the comments below if you're the type of guy that's been through all these transitions of fuel systems and you know you ended up with you know same place diet or if you're just now getting into the fox bodies like i tell you you can do block spitting power on stock rails with an, a regulator and a, and a wired pump and i keep reiterating the wired pump because everybody knows that fox bodies wiring suck so relying on that 16 gauge <laughs> wiring in a fuel pump you know to feed a lightly boosted modification Guys, that's just not gonna do it. It's just not big enough. Cause I mean, you need, the more amps you put on the pump, the more it's gonna work, the more efficient it works. And they tell you that in the directions with the 340. You wire the pump, you get more amperage into it. You get more, uh, you know, you get more flow out of it. That's just the way it works, you know? All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I just felt I should do a exhaust and fuel system. Uh, show you guys what we're doing here on the black car. I've had a lot of questions on some of those things and I felt that it was, you know, we'll end the season with those two mod, you know, those two things that I modified. But guys, if you enjoy the channel, make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe below. Hit that thumbs up or hit that bell for notifications so you're 
notified when we put up videos like this. We also got a channel membership. If you guys are interested in checking that out, it's a little join button below. There are perks for being a member of the channel. I appreciate everyone who's been part of the channel and been part of the membership. So um, outside of that, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you for this video. If this video has helped you, make sure you hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what type of fuel system you're running, what type of combo you're running. And, and let me know if you got any questions about your fuel system or what you should do. So outside of that, guys, I appreciate the watch time. I will see you soon in the next video. Stay tuned as we plan on making more power with a larger snail.